Tudor, good morning to you. You know, Michigan is where we heard uh, some of the death to America chants. Uh, we also, over the weekend, heard one protester in New York say, we are Hamas. Another protester was holding a sign uh, that pointed to Jewish students saying they should be Hamas's next targets. It all this begs the question, how did we get here? Not just on the campus of Columbia or these higher education, Ivy League uh, college campuses, but how did we get here as a country? Well, not just how did we get here, but what are we going to do going forward? Because I do think that there have been groups that have infiltrated our universities and they are creating, they're radicalizing students. I mean, if you look at these groups of students, these are your average American college students who have been radicalized by folks who we don't know who they are. They come onto the college campus, they have their faces completely covered, just their eyes are showing. They're, they're funded by 501c4s. They're using our American laws to come in here and potentially fund radicalization of American students. And I say that because they're calling for intifada. You hear them calling for the genocide of Jews. You hear the from the river to the sea chant. These are not protesters. These are people who are calling for war. This is different than what we saw in the 1960s when you had students on college campuses saying, make love, not war. They were calling for peace. These students are calling for war. We have never seen this in the United States before. And I think it's time that the FBI gets involved and says, how deep is this and what are they going to do next? I think it's clear, to your point, protesting is a protected activity under the Constitution. Mm -hmm. But what we're seeing at Columbia and other schools is definitely crossing the line in many instances mm -hmm. into illegality. And I think hedge fund manager Bill Ackman, who you remember spoke out against anti-Semitism at Harvard, he really hit the nail on the head here. Quote, how would Columbia respond if the students took over campus in support of the KKK and called for the genocide of other ethnic minorities? Would Columbia continue to support the demonstrations on the basis of a commitment to free speech, or would the university's code of conduct suddenly have operative impact. We're talking about the school's code of conduct. We're also talking about illegality in some instances. How should these university presidents deal with these protests going forward? Because, Tudor, whatever they're doing so far is not working. Well, right, and I think that we obviously know the answer to his question, but now that you see students in danger, I mean, the president of Columbia is saying they're holding classes virtually because it's not safe. Clear these people off of campus because if it's not safe, it's not a protest. I think that's where we have to, we have to acknowledge that if the students are no longer safe on campus, this is not a peaceful protest, and that's what's legal. If you go beyond peace, then you have to be taken away. You have to have police on campus, and these people have to be taken away. Campus needs to be safe for our students. At this point, we don't even know who these people are. We don't know if they are students on the college campus because you cannot see their faces. It is incredibly dangerous. And the fact that these university presidents are waffling on this, what does this say about our universities and the liberalism that has invaded our universities? And now, like I said, this is going into radicalization. This is incredibly dangerous yeah. in the United States. Yeah, it certainly is dangerous. And uh, Andrew Bates, released a statement on behalf of the White House condemning anti-Semitism. But at a time when we are hearing death to America chants and Jewish students are afraid to go to class, there's going to be uh, virtual learning uh, on the campus of Columbia. A lot of people are really scared. I think a lot of people would want to hear from President Biden himself. The last time he uh, made a, an Oval Office address was after the October 7th terror attack. Do you think that we will hear from the president in that capacity, in a White House capacity? Uh, over this as well? I absolutely think that we should hear from the president, but I don't think we will because of mostly the state of Michigan, because he wants power, and power and control is more important than the safety of our students on university campuses, because he is concerned with the vote in the state of Michigan, with the votes in the state of Minnesota, and ultimately he will stay silent because it's easier to try to win the votes. We will see. Tudor Dixon live for us. Thank you so Thanks, much. Tudor. Thank you.